Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on the religion of broken telephone, hadiths, and the proofs of Islam explained. I trust the last two episodes were helpful and help you to understand the world view of Islam, especially how the scholars shaped and crafted the doctrine of Islam derived from the Quran and derived from the Sunnah of Muhammad. Now note, I will reiterate certain points because these are not familiar to us and we need to understand the Islamic worldview and how Islamic doctrine is structured. So I will provide different contexts, different examples of these so that we can fully understand these concepts. These are their concepts, these are not ours, we would not consider these valid. By the same token, they don't consider our criteria valid. Now, news conveyed in a mutawatir manner is, according to Islamic doctrine and dogma, known with certainty and cannot be wrong. It is in this way that some of the miracles of the Prophet were conveyed to Muslims today, and thus Hadith are considered a definitive proof for his prophethood. Understand that by implication this means that the Quran is insufficient. The Quran is not enough on its own. Hence Muslims constantly appeal to our Bible, to the Christian Bible, for support to justify Muhammad's position as a prophet. Yet in the same breath they will call the Bible corrupt. Obviously we wish they would make up their minds, but understand this means that they are actually very insecure about the role of the Quran. And we need to understand that the Hadith supersede the Quran. So now there are two types of Mutawatir. We have Mutawatir Ma'nawi and Mutawatir Lafzi. You will find multiple different spellings of these words. I just picked two that were simple to spell, but you will find many, many different variations of these two words. Now there are two different types of mutawatir narrations. You have tawatir referring to the meaning of a narration only, which is called tawatir man'awi, or to both its meaning and its words, which is lafzi. Remember, lafzi is effectively verbatim or near verbatim transmission of a narration. The wording of some hadith may not be mutawatir, even though the meaning is mutawatir. That's mutawatir man'awi. So in other words, it's reported in different ways, but they all are pointing to and talking about and describing the same thing. As I said, if we have variations in the Gospels, Muslims consider that the Gospels are corrupt. In Islam, if the Hadith have multiple variations, it's like, huh, and? So, in these cases, there is a meaning that is common between the different narrations. The different narrations support each other in being considered mutawatir. Now, for instance, the existence of Japan is considered mutawatir. It is tawatir man'awi. Each person will describe it in a different way. Each person's evidence is different because each person went there for a different reason, had a different perspective. For instance, someone went there on holiday. They saw different things, went with a different purpose, had different experiences. Others went on business. Others went there to visit family. Others are talking about the weather, but they're still talking about the weather in Japan at their location. Maybe someone got sick there and he's talking how he got sick in Japan and went to the hospital. This is different to someone who went on a holiday and went up Mount Fuji for argument's sake. And so on and so on. The commonality is Japan. So thus, this makes Japan mutawatir. Each of them is telling a different story, but they're talking about the same common subject. Mutawatir lafzi, mutawatir in words. And what this means is the words are either identical or almost identical, known as mutakarib. For example, if a narration said, the one who does such and such will be punished, and another narration says, if someone does such and such, they deserve to be punished, these narrations are deemed mutawatir in terms of their words, mutawatir lafzi. The wording is nearly identical. Both types of mutawatir, whether by meaning or by words, result in quality, definitive information that is absolutely confirmed with certainty and cannot be a lie. This is the dogma, this is the doctrine of Islam created by its scholars. Please feel free to show me in the Quran where this is stated, where this appeared. It doesn't, which is why we have the constant refrain from Christian apologists saying, but that's not in the Quran. It doesn't matter. The scholars have defined the standards of Islam. And while you might say in theory you cannot violate the Quran, in practice they do. Now, some scholars say that mutawatir requires a minimum number of chains of transmission or witnesses, which would be 25. Others say it depends on the issue or the credibility of the narrators. So how important is the matter at hand? Or how senior, how authoritative are the people that you are quoting? For instance, you'll see other terms like other people saying 10 people, 
and so on. You'll find different numbers for this. Now, for instance, Muhammad is mutawatir. Jesus is not mutawatir. By extension, the Bible is not mutawatir. Scholars assert that mutawatir proves most prophethood beyond a shadow of doubt with 100% certainty that what he taught is truth. An oration that is from one person to a large group is not mutawatir. In other words, if you have, let's say, the Gospel of John, John wrote about Jesus, he is one person. Now, even if his writing were then passed on to 50 people, who then passed it on to a thousand people, who then passed it on to 10,000 people, who then passed it on to a million people, that is not mutawatir. You have a single reciter, a single narrator in that chain of transmission. Therefore, the Bible is not reliable. Now, they utilize the word that Christian scholars use or that academic scholars use, corrupt. Now, they don't use it the same way that we use it, but they utilize our word, and this confuses the issue. What they mean is it's not mutawatir. Remember, they reject our standards of evidence, textual evidence. They reject this. This is not valid to them. They've invented their own standards called broken telephone. So now, this is why they say the Christian claim about Prophet Isa, and this is Isa, this is not Jesus, this is the Gnostic Arian Jesus taken from Gnostic and heretical Gospels, which were rejected back then already. They're not considered valid then or now. So the Christian claim about Prophet Isa being killed is not mutawatir. And Paul's writings, for instance, and they specifically have a beef against Paul, Paul's writings are not mutawatir. So the Gospels are considered not mutawatir at all, despite the existence of copies of written texts. Again, they do not accept or abide by Western standards. None, according to them, has a single chain going back to the person who wrote it. Furthermore, none of the Gospels has a chain from the author to Jesus for what is claimed about Jesus. So these are not my arguments. These are the arguments that I've collected from these scholars. But this is what they say. This is their dogma. Likewise, they claim the Torah of the Jews is not mutawatir. Again, this is their term. They say the Torah of the Jews. These are the first five books of the Bible. So the Torah is according to Islam and according to the scholars, not mutawatir. The scholars are the ulama. So these are the people that the lay Muslim supposedly follows. Now, if the numbers in a chain falls below the minimum requirement, then the chain is no longer mutawatir. It falls into a lower grade. For instance, let's say 20 people witness something. But then that story got passed on to two people, who passed through two people, who then passed through five, who then passed through 20 or 30 or 100. That chain is not mutawatir. It has too few narrators. So, of course, the gospel of, well, the entire gospels are not mutawatir. They're garbage in terms of Islam, simply because the number of narrators, Luke is one guy, John's one guy, Matthew's one guy, Mark's one guy, etc., etc., etc. They've got other arguments against these as well, certainly. But this is actually their major argument. They just won't tell you because they don't want you to know. Now, the biblical gospels have no single chain of narration back to Luke or Matthew. And they say it is presumed that the authors wrote these Gospels, and they have no chain of narration back to Isa. Christians say Isa spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. I have a typo there, I need to fix that. I will next time. So Christians say that Isa spoke Aramaic. Now this is their argument, right, and Hebrew. They accept he spoke no Greek. Do we? Is that true? Is there evidence for that? No, they make assertions because they know that their followers will not validate the information. They will not check, they will not research. Remember, they, their culture relies on authority. They rely on people of authority who say something and you accept it. So we do not have the actual words of Jesus is what they tell us. So we have the Bible in Greek, but Jesus spoke Aramaic and Hebrew. Therefore, we don't have the original words in Aramaic and Hebrew. Therefore, we don't have his actual words. Therefore, we don't really know what he said. Therefore, we made it up and we have one translator and the Bible is corrupt. I hope that makes sense. Please understand that this is their argument. This is the gist of how they see this. Often, not a single chain of narration of trustworthy people with good memories goes back to Isa. We know from various studies, you can look at David Wood's channel and others, and you will see their memories are terrible. This is not something that they can rely on, but they claim that they have people with perfect memory, and we have none, and therefore our evidence of the Gospels is not mutawatir. Now, they claim that the Torah was lost. They say that the Jews say that the copies of the Torah were all burned and only one man had memorized it, which is really interesting considering that the Quran was all burned by one man. Who was this man that memorized it? I don't know. They didn't tell me, but this is something that one needs to go and verify. And 
they know the Muslims are not going to verify this. And of course, this is a discussion that they're having with their students. This is the da'wah they give the Muslims, not us. We are not supposed to be privy to this. We're not supposed to know this. They claim that this one man dictated the Torah from memory, and because it's one man, this chain is not mutawatir. This is their claim for the superiority of the Quran over the Bible. They say that the Quran has numerous mutawatir chains back to the Prophet. By this, they are 100% certain that the Qur'an today is the same exact Qur'an recited by Mo and heard by the companions. I trust that clarifies how they consider the Bible to be inferior, weak, and corrupt. Now, moving on to Mashur Hadith, literally famous Hadith. The Mashur Hadith, now this is another type of spelling. I left this in here so you can see there are multiple different ways of spelling this. The Mashur Hadith is defined as narrated from the Prophet by at least three companions and then narrated by at least three of the followers of the companions, and then repeated by at least three of the followers of the followers, and so on from the beginning of the chain until its end. Mashur, according to, now this is the Encyclopedia of Islam, in the science of tradition, a well-known tradition transmitted via a minimum of three different isnads. These are the references to the volumes in the Encyclopedia of Islam. In law, Mashur means the predominant opinion, as opposed to the isolated or anomalous opinion. Understand these are legal terms. Mutawatir is a legal term, not a religious term, legal term. Imams and so on, all these scholars are jurists, lawyers, not priests. I have another typo, please ignore that. And suitable, now a mashur hadith is suitable for use in judging something as being haram. So it is suitable for legal use. Again, there is no sense of right and wrong in terms of morals, there's legal and illegal in Islam. In Christianity we have moral and immoral, in Islam they have legal and illegal. 